All right, friends, here we go with our next lesson on the music of Cuba. We're going to check out some examples of different styles of Cuban music and talk a little bit about them. The first example is an example of a rumba. <laughs> Our next Cuban music style is the music of son. It emerged in Cuba in 1900 as a popular dance music. It derives some features from Spanish music including its harmonies, the use of guitar, and trace. To this it added characteristics of rumba, which we just saw before. Um, features derived from rumba included the clave, a two-part formula structure. The structure consisted of a song-like first section, followed by a longer section featuring call and response, vocals, and improv from the musicians. In the 1940s, son became a popular music in Cuba and Puerto Rico, and then made its way to New York City. When it made its way to New York City, it was a loose definition which encompassed most of rural music found in Cuba, rural blues of the United States, but by the 1920s, the standard configuration of some musicians, which was a singer, trumpet, guitar, bass, trace, bongos, maraca, and clave, became the official definition. Musical characteristics of San were its highly syncopated nature of its groove, so a lot of offbeats, um, and none of the musicians would ever emphasize the downbeat of one. So it, in San, you wouldn't hear one, two, three, four. You might hear one and two. It begins with a statement, then it's followed by a break, and then by the montuno, which opens up the song for soloing. Usually sections are announced by mambos, which is a unison break from the rhythm section, which cued each change. Let's check out this example of song. <laughs> There's an example of son. Um, so you notice there was a unison break, and right before the guitar solo, it was like a song structure, then went to that, just as a common characteristic that we described before. Moving on to the next genre, bolero is a slow romantic style song rooted in Spanish dance. We're going to check that out. En el lenguaje misterioso de tus ojos Hay un tema que destaca Sensibilidad El 
Las sensuales líneas de tu cuerpo hermoso Las curvas que se admiran despiertan ilusión Y es la cadencia de tu voz tan cristalina So, it's got a lot of the same instrumentation from the first one plus a piano, um, a little modern setting, and it's way slower. We're going to check out our next style, which our friends, the next example is a style called Nueve Torova. Torova referred to the singer guitar player, and the music style Nueve Torova emerged in the 1960s and can be considered Cuba's political folk music. Its lyrics often contained satirical evaluations of the government as well as social commentary. A lot of times it was found in a 6-8 um, tempo, slower, and mostly featured a singer and good an acoustic guitar. Um, here's an example. Preguntar, nada más por preguntar, donde han ido todos. Porque estamos solos, un lugar, algún lugar, donde el mal y solo el mal pondrá oscuro el cielo y sin más consuelo que llorar. All right, the next style is Don Zon. Um, Danzan was the first official dance of Cuba. We're going to watch like a mini documentary. It's going to explain the history of it. In the early 19th century, French colonists fleeing the Haitian Revolution brought the contradanza, an elegant European form of music and dance, to Cuba. Essentially a sophisticated mating ritual, the story of the contradanza is a constant struggle of musicians trying to spice up the music without throwing off the dancers. Dominating the Cuban musical scene for half a century, this adopted music was played by early groups called Orquesta Tipicas literally typical orchestras, which used primarily wind instruments and played at popular social events. The foundation of Cuban contradanza was the cinquillo, a rhythm that both spoke to the dancers and unified the musicians. This rhythm was what defined the music, and it also showed up in other styles such as ragtime. The cinquillo is what separated the Europeans from the Cubans, and the Cuban contradanza soon became known as the danzón, Cuba's first official dance. The first written form of Danzón was Las Alturas de Simpson, composed by Miguel Fayilde in 1879. It consisted of an introduction and a paseo, repeated and followed by a 16-bar melody. 
During this section, dancers chose partners, strolled onto the dance floor, and began dancing precisely on the fourth beat of bar four of the paseo, leading into the melody. When the introduction repeated, the dancers stopped, flirted, and greeted friends, and prepared for the next melody. In Danzon, the instrumentation changed, and the charanga, a group with more focus on string instruments, emerged to replace the Orchestra Tipica in the 1930s. Known as inside groups, they were lighter and more elegant than the original. Israel Cachao Lopez and his brother Orestes first devised the final section of the Danzon known as the Mantuno section. It was a chance for instrumentalists to show off their solos and dancers to show off their moves, and was the most energetic part of the song. style of music is the mambo. Mambo came to prominence in the early 1950s. Mambo is, the, is first and foremost a dance music created as a backdrop for ballroom dancing events. It's normally performed in a big band with notable singers. So we're going to see some of the same instrumentation, uh, instrumentation in the denzon, but we got a little bit of a different feel with the mambo. Check it out. <laughs> styles of music, we got Guan Guanco. Guan Guanco is a type of rumba characterized by highly syncopated rhythms based on the Guan Guanco clave, which we'll get into in the next lesson. We're going to learn all about the clave. You can see our friend here he has some claves in his hand. Um, this style is very much connected to spiritual and religious Santa Rita dances found in the countryside. So in the countryside of Cuba, one of the main religions was Santeria, which brought dance and music together in a big way, and Juan Guanco is a style that was prominent in it. Let's check it. Where's my mouse? That's yes, here we go. Let's check it out. <laughs> going to wrap up our crash course on different styles of Cuban music. Next class we're going to look into the rhythm, the rhythmic aspects that make these styles different from one another and what we see similar throughout music in Cuba. 
We're going to be focusing on that instrument right there. I brought it up in the last one, and we're going to spend a whole lesson talking about it. It's the clave, two sticks. But the rhythm is found in each example we've seen so far, and each one is slightly different. Syncopation is going to play a big deal, and we're going to dive into it next lesson.